the key for this video cast was I want to know from your side, what was the result of all this? Like which of the mm -hmm. things that I just meant to, mentioned were impactful? Yeah. What happened um, as a result of putting them in place? Um, and then what other things that I miss? And again, yeah. what, what are the things, what things that did we do that did not work? Like, yeah, let's, so let's, let's, let's tease apart some about of that. how we screwed up. Yeah, that's, up. yeah that's, that sounds good. Okay, so we, we start out with the one-on-one, -on -one, which is like, that's like the heartbeat of your, of your company. And you've just got to get it right. And it's one of the first questions I ask when I'm interviewing managers is how do you run your one-on-one? -on -one? And most of them waffle. They say, oh, it's the, my, my report's meeting. We, it's unstructured. We do whatever uh, they want to do. That's not how we run things at Clearbit. We run a highly structured one-on-one -on -one that is highly effective. So up until recently, I was only doing one-on-ones every two weeks, and I was only doing half an hour. So that was that's one day every two weeks with the execs, we, and we got everything we needed to, to get done in that time. And there's and only when, when you do that one word, you're following the structure that I shared with you or has mm -hmm. it changed? Okay. No, we, we're following the structure. So the only way that you get as much done in that short period of time as, as we do is preparation. So prior to the one-on-one, -on -one, your report will write up an update of all the good and bad things that have happened since your last one-on-one. -on -one. And the way we've started structuring these at Clibber now is they're related to the OKRs that that person owns, the objectives they own. So they'll, they, they have to be candid. So they have to write what is good, but they also have to talk about what is bad. So that's the first part. So you both read through the update in silence and, um, and then ask questions. And then we get to the rest of the the one on one. So again, preparation is key. So any issues that need to be discussed are brought up beforehand. We actually use Asana um, to store all this. Back in the day with Matt, we used Google Docs. Um, oh, oh no, we actually. I, oh, we switched. Pretty, well, yeah, did. Google Docs was like the first two meetings. Oh, uh, okay. For, when we, we did the team, yeah. we instantly went to Asana. We went to Asana. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. In the one-on-one, -on -one, you're right, I use Google Doc, and for the team, I used Asana, but you actually have now migrated Asana to use for the one-on-one -on -one meeting. Yeah, we use Asana Perfect. exclusively now. Perfect, yes, and, um, we did that. Yeah, and I, and I, love, I love that tool, but um, so we use, we, we kind of stretch it for our needs. So the, so the update, there's a, just a task there, and it, there's a comment on the task, and we get a new comment every, every week with the update. So first you read that update and then you get to the issues. Uh, again, these can be brought up by either party beforehand. They have a good description and preferably a proposed solution. And the idea is that these are little things that uh, need quick de decision making on, on, the, on these things. Like maybe your report needs to like gut check something with you before making a decision or they need your input. Or maybe you need, they need your sign off. So you, you're meant to go through these issues pretty quickly. And if, and if it's a bigger issue, then maybe you have a dedicated meeting for it, but it's not part of your one-on-one. -on -one. And so you're, you're just going through these issues. You're just saying, yep, I agree with that proposed solution. That sounds good. That sounds good. That sounds good. And then you get to topics. And so one of the pushbacks we had when we first implemented the system was that people were like, you know, Alex, I, I want to use the system, but I'm worried that our one ones are meant to be this creative place where we jam on ideas. And I'm worried that all this structure is just going to kill that. And that is why we have a dedicated section that we spend the majority of the time on in this creative zone. And we just call that topics. So because you've done all that preparation, you've got through all the uh, little things that, that you need to get through the minutiae, so quickly, it actually leaves a lot more time for the for the bigger topics, and and see so that these are more open ended topics that we will just discuss, and then we we finish with feedback and then a high five, and you might want to elaborate on the on the feedback system that you use. Okay, uh, actually, but before I even get to the feedback system, why is what you just said like what was the impact on the company for putting in that 
system that you just described? Well, one of the biggest impacts was this accountability cadence. So one of the most important questions I ask in the one-on-one is what are the top three things that you need to accomplish by this time next week? We call them top tasks. And it's important that you ask that question rather than uh, just telling someone what the most important three things are um, because they really should know and they, you want them to have some buy-in as well into what they're doing. So they, they'll tell you what the most important three things are. You put it into Asana as tasks that expire the next one-on-one. So they have to be finished by the next one-on-one. And you set up the expectation that there's an accountability cadence that these have to be done. These are impeccable agreements. So an impeccable agreement has a has an owner, a good description, and a due date on it. And you just set in your culture that you have, if you agree to something, then you have to complete it. And so that set up, sets up this accountability cadence. And well, it's a little well, awkward if, initially. There, if someone makes an agreement and realizes suddenly that they're not going to complete it, or for mm-hmm. some reason the world has changed, that's no longer they, they, Don't yeah. they have the ability to go back to the person they had the agreement with and say, hey, I w- I'd like to renegotiate this agreement because it, it's no longer valid? Exactly. That's the key yeah. word, renegotiate. Um, but, the, but what can happen is you look at the agreement in a week's time and nothing has got done. And you, you forgot hear, about it or didn't. Yeah, you just have a, forgot about it. You hear a bunch of excuses or, or you, you hear it's been delayed another two weeks, but no one you know, asked you about it. So that, that's what we call impeccable agreements. And, and so having that accountability cadence, I think really helps your team focus because every week they, they know they have to get the top three tasks done. Because it's very easy in an executive to just get distracted by you know, the day-to-day craziness of company. But mm-hmm. if you have those top three tasks and maybe even some dedicated time in your calendar to completing them, uh, then you get, you get the important stuff done. Instead of just reacting to inbound requests from the other members of the company or the team or customers or whoever, you right. actually carve out time to make progress towards yeah. the big goal for the person, the team, the department, the company. Makes total mm-hmm. sense. How did that... So having that accountability and therefore knowing that important things were getting done. Um, how did that change the company? And here's my guess, but you tell me if this actually happened. You know, at 25, again, your leadership team, you guys were, maybe you were spending more time in your, your leader, your team meetings, but you were getting solutions that you all had buy-in because you're doing it verbally and you, you all trusted each other and you got to good solutions. So mm-hmm. I, don't, I'm, I don't believe that the, the leadership team worked any better after this. What I think happened was because it all stayed in writing, each individual, first of all, everyone knew what the agreement actually was because a verbal agreement, everyone has a different understanding of what that verbal agreement was, but a written agreement, there's no confusion. And I think that being, having now written agreements and written in Asana could then be shared forward with their team members so that the person actually doing the work understood the context of what issue is this solving? And Therefore, because it's all written and therefore had context to actually do the action to actually solve the issue as opposed to just like, oh, I'm doing an action that someone told me, like, I don't even know what, what this is all about. And then, of course, right. they, won't, they won't do it in the way that solves the problem. Right. And so, so it allowed say, you to start hiring more people who could actually go do these tasks actually effectively. Yeah. But that's, I'm making up a story there. I don't know if that's actually what happened. Uh, so I would say... Uh... You're right. We're a very close leadership team, very close in there. You know, we've we've been working, sitting next to each other for for a few years at that point. And uh, so, yeah, we understood the business very well and we worked very well together. But, you know, there's a, a step one. Your system lets you use time effectively. So in the leadership meeting, because so much of this is prepared, we run the leadership team like our one on ones everyone prepares an update. Every issue is brought up beforehand as task and assignment, all the topics are brought up before. It's, it's prepared for. So and could, can we inter- interject for one second here, Alex? Mm-hmm. Do you do your one-on-ones before the team meeting so that the one-on-ones actually become preparation for the team meeting? I do, yeah. So we use, we use the same update from the one-on-one as for the leadership meeting. And I like doing them straight before the leadership meeting because then it lets the, the company 
state gets kind of synchronized in my mind. Right. So um, everyone's right. seeing the same issue at the same time. Yeah. All the different perspectives on the same. Infinite. Yeah. And by the time the leadership meeting comes around, I'm a bit more prepared. I know what we're going to talk about. And I can see patterns across the company as well. Yes. So, but back to what you were saying, I, I do think it does let you use the time a bit more creatively and uh, you get more things done. But, but I think what you were alluding to was this kind of ripple effect. And if, and if all of your executives see the system and they see it working and they've got buy-in, then they're going to start doing it on their own teams. And that's where it gets really effective. Awesome. Awesome. Um, now, I don't know if you'd be willing to do this, but you, you know, hearing what Asana is and what the structure looks like, is it, it's, you know, it's tough to do. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing right now to screen share your Asana system? And the only problem is it's going to be current. So I don't know if it's going to have anything super proprietary. I don't want that because this is video and people can go, you know, stop frame and watch it forever and study every word. Yeah. So, let me just see. Um, uh, yeah, that, okay. this is great. I'm just, I'm going to ask you to this share up. with us two things. If you're willing to Asana yeah. is the dicier one, because obviously that's issues current, mm -hmm. but the less dicey one is your wiki and notion. Mm -hmm. which I think is also best of breed. Okay, great. So okay. can you please walk us through how this meeting works? This is the, the leadership team meeting, but it sounds like every single department and every single team meeting at, a, at in Clearbit is structured this way. That's right. Yeah, so this is the, the ultimate meeting, but we use the same structure for all the meetings. Right on. So walk us through each piece, please? Yeah, so we start out with um, the highlight of the week, and this we all we say all say what was the best thing that happened in the last week, and this you gets get the people joy juices good, flowing. Yeah, get, get people in a good space. Yeah, right on. and then we all read through the updates. Um, I'm not going to click into each one of them because they're a little sensitive, but perfect. Uh, and this is when least, people report on what happened good, what happened bad. And exactly, their proposed and solutions you, for the issues. You can see an executive owns each of these um, updates, right? And uh, they just write a comment on the task in Asana, right? We got issues and uh, proposed solutions, okay? And um, so there are none, none right now. None right now, and then we got topics for. Um, and, and in the issue and proposed solution, people write in the description over in the task area, mm -hmm. right? Here's the problem that I see. Mm -hmm. I, I've now added a little something which I didn't share with you before, which is here's what I did to create it. And the reason I do that is because if people think, oh, the problem's out there, then they can't solve the problem because someone else has to solve it. But if mm -hmm. they think, well, what did I actually do to create this? First mm -hmm. of all, it's more humble when it gets read but also mm -hmm. they can act, actually give us a clue of what they can actually do to solve the problem. And mm -hmm. then of course the third part is their proposed solution, which is the steps they recommend that you as a team take to solve the issue. Right. And people either agree or discuss. Yep. Right on. So okay. we have those issues and then more open-ended topics. Again, these generally have a pretty good description on them that we'll read through before discussing the topic. Right. Um, but this is where the magic happens. Awesome. And, and then we do mutual feedback um, we, we kind of usually go around in a circle and give feedback to the person next to us. Um, and, and during a one-on-one, -on -one, obviously this is just between the manager and their report. And we'll say something that we like and something that we wish. So I like that and I wish that. And that is actually a critical part of one-on-ones. It's not in every meeting, but it's, has to be as part of every one-on-one. -on -one. Excellent. And it sounds like in giving this feedback, you know, one of the dangers of giving feedback in a group to a person is that if the person um, has high ego, which most people do, they feel shame. If you say, hey, I wish you would change this, and other people, especially their peers, are watching and getting to see this, they feel like, oh my God, I've been humiliated in public. So in order to do this group open, transparent feedback, there has to be an agreement from everyone. Like I'm willing to give up feeling shame and yeah. I'm more interested in learning. And therefore I give you permission because if, if you don't have buy-in from people to do this, they can get very upset very quickly. So we have that commitment at the leadership level 
everyone on the leadership team is okay getting feedback in public. Yeah. You're right. It's very difficult and it takes swallowing pride, but that's part of being involved in the leadership team. I know. Uh, for the rest of the company, we, we don't expect that. We give critical feedback in private. Right. Makes sense. And, and then, then you, he, yeah, brought up your one-on-one. Yeah, here's the one-on-one. Um, very similar. You can see the updates. These are around the OKRs. We actually use, we store all of our OKRs in Asana and these are duplicate. Or they're, these are the same tasks that are in a few different places. And then we've got issues, proposed solutions, and we've got feedback in here. So uh, this is the bi-directional feedback. It's quite, a, it's quite important that it's bi-directional. You know, the manager is in, is in service of their report and the manager can improve just as much as the report can. It's very difficult to elicit though. Right. So I would advise companies to have multiple ways of giving feedback. And we found that one of the most effective ways is anonymous feedback when we use a tool called Tiny Pulse. So you, it's important that the opportunity is there for reports to give the manager's feedback. But I think it's also important that you create other opportunities for people that are not happy about giving that feedback. Makes total sense. I love it. Thank you, Alex, for sharing this. 